Chapter 3 of the Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales This is a Discerning Hearts recording read by Corey Webb. Devotion is suitable to every vocation and profession. When God created the world, He commanded each tree to bear fruit after its kind, and even so He bids Christians, the living trees of His church, to bring forth fruits of devotion, each one according to His kind and vocation. A different exercise of devotion is required of each, the noble, the artisan, the servant, the prince, the maiden, and the wife. And furthermore, such practice must be modified according to the strength, the calling, and the duties of each individual. I ask you, my child, would it be fitting that a bishop should seek to lead the solitary life of a Carthusian? And if the father of a family were as regardless in making provision for the future as a capuchin, if the artisan spent the day in church like a religious, if the religious involved himself in all manner of business on his neighbor's behalf as a bishop is called upon to do, would not such a devotion be ridiculous, ill-regulated, and intolerable? Nevertheless, such a mistake is often made, and the world, which cannot or will not discriminate between real devotion and the indiscretion of those who fancy themselves devout, grumbles and finds fault with devotion which is really no wise concerned in these errors. No, indeed, my child, the devotion which is true hinders nothing, but on the contrary, it perfects everything. And that which runs counter to the rightful vocation of any one is, you may be sure, a spurious devotion. Aristotle says that the bee sucks honey from flowers without damaging them, leaving them as whole and fresh as it found them. But true devotion does better still, for it not only hinders no manner of vocation or duty, but contrawise, it adorns and beautifies all. Throw precious stones into honey, and each will grow more brilliant according to its several color. And in like manner, everybody fulfills his special calling better when subject to the influence of devotion. Family duties are lighter, married love truer, service to our king more faithful, every kind of occupation more acceptable, and better performed where that is the guide. It is an error, nay more, a very hearsay, to seek to banish the devout life from the soldier's guardroom, the mechanic's workshop, the prince's court, or the domestic hearth. Of course, a purely contemplative devotion, such as is specially proper to the religious and monastic life, cannot be practiced in these outer vocations. But there are various other kinds of devotion well suited to lead those whose calling is secular, along the paths of perfection. The Old Testament furnishes us examples in Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, David, Job, Tobias, Sarah, Rebecca, and Judith. And in the New Testament, we read of St. Joseph, Lydia, and Crispus, who led a perfectly devout life in their traits. We have St. Anne, Martha, St. Monica, Aquila, and Priscilla. As examples of household devotion, Cornelius, St. Sebastian, and St. Maurice among soldiers, Constantine, St. Helena, St. Louis, the Blessed Amadeus, and St. Edward on the throne. And we even find instances of some who fell away in solitude, usually so helpful to perfection. Some who had led a higher life in the world, which seems so antagonistic to it. St. Gregory dwells on how Lot, who had kept himself pure in the city, fell in his mountain solitude. Be sure that wheresoever our lot is cast, we may and must aim at the perfect life.